It's amazing how little religious people are willing to whittle God down to when they're trying to sell him to you. See, I've been getting a lot more of this lately. Of course, ever since I started doing the show, I've gotten a steady stream of Christian apologists reaching out to sell me their Jesus. But by and large, they're either all caps internet trolls or seasoned apologists that know their arguments and have their William Lane Craig approved flow charts. But since I moved back to Georgia, I've had to reacquaint myself with the layman's brick and mortar version of the Jesus pitch. And to be fair, I bring it on myself. Right. When people ask what I do for a living and everybody always asks that, I say I do a podcast about atheism. Now, I, I used to do the vague descriptor thing. I'd say, uh, you know, I do a podcast about mo movies and stuff and I'd avoid the hassle. And beyond that, I've been conditioned by my culture to believe that my existence is rude. So I don't want to be too in your face about it. But of course, eventually it occurred to me that nobody would ever hesitate to say, I do a podcast about baseball or I do a podcast about video games because it would be too in your face about their love for baseball or video games. And if they were doing a podcast about their Lord and Savior, Jesus fucking Christ, you probably couldn't get them to stop telling you that. And as to avoiding the hassle, well, it's a burden I'm willing to bear as one of the few people in this area that can just say I'm an atheist without risk of losing their job or their family connections. So you know, kind of incumbent on me to do what I can to help normalize rationality. So eventually I just learned to embrace it. They say, what do you do for a living? I say, I do a podcast about atheism and sure they freak the fuck out. But at least when I use the A word, I don't have to follow it up by explaining what a podcast is. Now, so far I've been able to lump every single reaction to this into one of three categories. There's the disappointed, disapproving side glance followed by a rapid subject change. There's the show me on the doll where the priests touch you. I'm really just concerned for your mortal soul. Look how wide my eyes are, folks that have been convinced by Christian movies and stories that all I really need here is to have a good cry about why I'm so angry at God, and then I'll fall back into the open arms of Mother Church. And then finally, there are the let me tell you what I'm going to do for you, folks. These are the folks that are pretty sure they can get me to drive away in this savior today if I don't answer yet. Yeah, they've spoken with their pastor and gotten special permission to offer me my eternal salvation at a very steep discount, but I got to get it today. And this is what I call whittling away at God, right? If they can't get even the thinnest wedge into the door, they'll settle for a toothpick. Don't like the anti-gay stuff? Well, their pastor is very open-minded about the gays, and when he gives money to anti-LGBT hate groups, he does it very discreetly. Don't like the sexism? Well, their church lets women hold high-ranking positions all the way to the top, theoretically. They just haven't found the right woman yet. Don't like the strict moral codes? Well, don't worry, because if you come to our church and join in our collective delusion once a week, literally no one will give a shit how immoral you are. You can still have blood on your fist from abusing your spouse, and we will all dutifully turn the other cheek so we can't see it. Don't like the wild implausibility of the entire concept of God? Well, don't worry, because our religion comes with a toggle where everything we say can be literal or metaphorical, depending on the situation, even if some of the stuff we say occasionally has to be both. Hell, I had one guy a few months ago try to sell me on his church by telling me that the sermons were really short. Like half an hour max. I mean, if I'm not willing to join their religion for that, I'm the one being unreasonable, ain't I? And I, I mean, I guess I get where they're coming from. You know, a lot of people probably don't go to church because going to church is onerous and boring. Religious people are annoying and judgy. So if you're trying to talk the lapsed Christian back into church, tell them about a church that's quick and easy and still counts is probably pretty effective most of the time. But it's some silly shit when the situation you're trying to rectify is, I don't even believe in your God. But despite the guaranteed misfire undergirding this whole argument, I fucking love it. Because whether they realize it or not, what they're really saying to me is nothing about my religion matters. There is no element of it that these people aren't willing to jettison if it means that you'll agree that Jesus Christ is the one true Lord and Savior, a statement which, once all the theological underpinnings have been jettisoned, is entirely meaningless. And I know this isn't true for all Christians, right? Some of them have really rigorous constructs and kill each other for generations over the smallest deviations. But most of them don't really give a fuck about the specifics. Jesus loves them. They live forever. Bad people go to hell. If you're good on those things, hell, if you're good on the first two, they're good with you. 
These are the Christians who blame the fundamentalists for ha- giving religion a bad name, as though something can have bad fundamentals and deserve a good one. Hell, at their most extreme, they'll tell you the problem isn't with religion, it's with organized religion. It, it, Religion is a goddamn system of organization. By definition, all religion is organized. It's self-contradictory, and yet they don't hesitate to toss it out there like it's a distinction that a sane person would recognize. And the goal here, of course, is to whittle down God until he fits comfortably in your pocket, no matter how small your pocket is, only to layer all that harmful bullshit back on later. Or you know what? Or maybe not. Sometimes they're Joel Osteen types that just want your money. Either way, we have a term for a person whose product suddenly turns into whatever it is that you're willing to buy. And the term isn't honest.